Hi, John Cavobianco here. Sorry it looks like I'm under the spotlight. It's because I am. I'm in a hotel room in San Francisco. But I couldn't wait to share this. And what a better place than in the heart of it all at Silicon Valley. So, MCP. You've been hearing this. You've been, you can't avoid hearing it lately. And I decided to tackle it. And now I understand why you can't stop hearing about it. I would pay very close attention to this video. Now, a couple things. This video is not going to be code heavy. I'll show you some of the files and some of the stuff, but this is not the place or the time for code. It's to explore the, the, the usability of this MCP and the possibilities. And I just got it working. We're going to talk about what next steps are at the end of the video. So let's take a look at an Excaladraw real quick. So before we get to the Excaladraw, MCP is model context protocol. Now in the networking world, we are all about the protocols because without protocols, things are static. Things are wild. Things don't have standards. Things cannot intercommunicate with each other. When you hear about BGP protocol, OSPF protocol, even back to RIP, right? Protocols. The building blocks for hypercommunication. This is a three minute read. This is from Anthropic, and they've open sourced all of this. The next place I would go is modelcontextprotocol.io and really, really try to absorb this. There's an SDK for Python, there's an SDK for everything. There's Quick Start, there's examples. Now, there's going to be example servers because we need a server. And check out some of these servers. There's file systems, Postgres, SQL, Google Drive, development tools, Git, GitHub, GitLab, Sentry, browsing tools, productivity and communication, AI and specialized alerting, official integrations, community highlights. We're just getting going here. So with this information in mind, here is what I have to date that will still work. The MCP will come to that. Just hold on. But right now what we have is a Lang graph listening on 2024. Now that is a REST API. Let me change colors here. That is a REST API that we create a thread and then we send a prompt and a PCAP either via curl, my streamlit front end. Now when I say streamlit, Right, the user can come to the streamlet on port 80 and the streamlet will go ahead and start the thread and do the work for you. But you can also do it through Python scripts of your own or Postman. That's the luxury of having an API. I'm sending all of my threading to Lang Smith for visibility and troubleshooting and, and um, to see the flows. Now, what is this Lang graph? Well, this Lang graph is very simple. It looks just like this. Start assistant tools. Now, what are those tools? I have the tools broken down a little further here. Let's go to those first. So this assistant takes in the PCAP and the prompt and will iterate appropriately to its tools with very little hard coding, with no hard coded instruction. Now, what are some of these tools? Well, we have the RAG tool to do the retrieval augmented generation, the primary tool here. All right, number one tool, RAG. So we can actually do um, augmentation of the generated output by looking at the actual PCAP JSON. But look at all these other tools, meaning if there is a public IP and should the user want to and ask for it in their prompts, we can ping, trace, BGP lookups, NS lookups, geolocation, digs, who is. We can even send an email. Quick story on the email. I'm going to go back to full screen. I'm doing all these tools and I'm in the Uber on the way to the office today and I'm having a conversation with the driver who's in the kind of realm of artificial intelligence. He's a student doing computer science somewhere nearby. And uh, he said, I think it'd be neat if you could send emails from that tool. So today in 10, 15 minutes, we added this send email tool. So meaning from the prompt, we can say, what can you tell me about this PCAP? And could you send an email to john at gmail.com? And it will send that email. 
Okay, back to the main topic, MCP. I'm going to go back up here for a second. Because there is some... I'm going to change to red up here. There is some friction involved here. This equals friction. Right? I need to start a thread. I need the proper body of the of the API call, right? I need to know the API system. I need to know some ins and outs of this. And I go to slash docs and I read the API documentation and I figure out how to start a thread, get the thread ID, start with the prompt and the PCAP and, and base64 and all that is friction. Friction. So we come to MCP. And how this works is there's going to be an MCP client. You notice that in the docs, a client for my packet capture MCP server. The server takes care of everything. Big green check mark. And I'll show you how easy this is. I send it the prompt and the PCAP and I run my server or my client. That's it. Client takes in the prompt and the local PCAP file. That's it. That's all we need to do anymore. There is no APIs to worry about. There is no nonsense. There's no friction. The other thing I really am excited about, and that's next, this is part two down the road, is this integration here to the MCPX server. So I can use the protocol and go server to server. That's what I'm hoping for. So I could integrate my server with, say, the Git MCP server or specification. And now when I get that PCAP analysis, maybe I want to make a Git repository branch out of it. Or better yet, store it in a Postgres database, right? Or do whatever with it. That's part two. So now let's look at this live. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this prompt here is bring up my Docker container system. Now if I look at my Docker Compose real quick, I have added this MCP server that is my MCP server. Now my MCP server docker file, my .mcp, I'm installing some stuff and I'm going to thin this out uh, and, I, and, I, and then I run that MCP server Python script. The Python script is about uh, 250 lines of code and the client is under 100 lines of code. Okay, so that's all the code we're going to look at, everyone. I'm sorry, I'll do a deeper dive later. Let's get to the business. So let me um, get this going here. So I'm going to bring the Docker container up. And you're going to see a few containers come up now. You're going to see an SMTP server so I can send mail. You're going to see my main Lang Graph server. And now everything is up and running, and we're very happy. Now remember, I have a client... So I'm just going to say python3 mcpclient.py, pass it in what is my source IP and my local pcap file. Enter. What is the source IP? Here's the capture file. We've created a thread and there's a thread ID. Sending analysis request. And here comes the analysis results. Now what is happening here? What is happening here? We're going to go to the Langsmith portal we're going to look at the Langsmith tracing. And you're going to see something running here right now. And this is the Lang graph that is running all of the steps to come back with the answer here of the IP address. Right? Now, if I go back to that terminal, it should be done. And there is the answer. The source IP address in this packet capture is... This is a private IP address commonly used within local networks. Now, can we invoke some of the other tools? Right? So this is not conversational in a way, although I do have the thread, and I could pick up from that thread and keep going, and maybe make my client a full conversational prompt where I could keep asking questions. That's something I will probably do next, is make this client where the client stays open and I can follow up with more questions. But for now, let's hard code another question and try to get an email. So what we're gonna say is, um, 
And let's use a different capture. So if you're bare with me here, uh, now let's just use that capture for now in the video. There is a public IP address. Now it's not going to work, but what we can do is, what is the destination IP? If it is public, can you do some deeper analysis of the packet, of the IP you find? Can you send a comprehensive email report to John Capobianco at, let's send it to my work email, let's send it to my public email at gmail.com and I'm going to send it to capture. So, okay, excuse me, um, I had a, 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 a miss a typo in my email. So we're going to say, what is the destination IP? If it is public, can you do some deeper analysis of the IP you find? Can you send a comprehensive email report to John Capobianco at his, P, uh, at his PT Capo at Gmail? And then there's the capture file. So we're going to watch the trace here for this latest one. Now, this is really neat. We have the assistant calling the rag tool. Makes sense, right? With the vector store and the chroma lookup. Now the assistant is going to go and do all of these public IP tools because we asked it for a comprehensive report. So it's running and trying all of these different things, right? And then it should be sending me an email. So there's the analysis of the destination and it's been completed and there's been an email sent. So let's quickly check and see if I got an email. I think I will have. Let's just quickly hop into my public Gmail, my dummy account here. There we go. So from, I've completed the analysis and here's the details. Capture, the IP layer, source destination protocol, some who is information, the network range, the country, the ASN, the location, some security insights, the network path analysis, ping timed out, no DNS reverse lookup, and a full conclusion in an email. All from me sending the prompt a little differently to my MCP server. We have all the tracing in the background from the land graph. Isn't that remarkable? Now, obviously, some next steps. This is just exploding in my mind to connect other MCP servers to my MCP server. See if I can get that into maybe a Postgres database or into Google Drive or into Git or do other things with it. Let's keep going. MCP, please do not sleep on this. You slept on RAG, you slept on LangGraph, you slept on a lot of things. MCP is not to be missed, okay? It is a protocol and that protocol is going to enable a whole new hyper-connectivity of agentic AI.